Alright, so I am Michael Doherty, and I run a Facebook page, and I guess you can call it an organization uh, called Safe Sci-Fi. We basically started when Story Universe got cancelled by a Sci-Fi channel, and I got involved with Safe Story Universe, you know, the online movement. And I found out about all these other science fiction shows that were being cancelled because these Farscape. networks... Yes, Farscape 2, that's a fantastic show. Um, but I found out how they all getting cancelled because the networks weren't taking into account all the viewership online, all the viewership you know, on demand and all that stuff. Just the Nielsen ratings, which of course are horrible. Um, so basically that's how it started. And I realized that with all the other shows, and there's like 5,000 fans here. 5,000 here, 2,000, 10,000. In one case, 75,000. Yeah. What? And I realized that you know, once these shows finally, you know, once it's two or three years after these shows get canceled, people aren't going to aren't going to be as adamant about it anymore. Mm -hmm. So bring and you know, so I figured bring everybody together, try to find a central theme, which happened to be, of course, science fiction. Um, yeah, for a, for a few years, we had very little science fiction on TV, other than maybe you know the rare, uh, slight, you know, on the line show like Warehouse 13. Uh, I love it. It's, it's to some degree science fiction, but a lot of it's fantasy too. Um, and you know, even now with the shows like Intelligence and Almost Human, they're not primarily sci-fi. They're like cop. They're cop shows with a slight sci-fi twist to it. Mm -hmm. More fantasy than sci-fi. Well, almost hu almost humans, uh, make, let's make sure don't confuse about being human and almost human. A lot of people confuse that. Almost human is basically androids. Oh, that's a different one. My yeah. husband's big on that one. Being human that's is, android, yeah. Being human is the sci-fi sci one. A lot of people, I've posted stuff on my page about it, about being human, they're like, the British version's better. Well, that's the wrong show. I was going to say, there is no British version <laughs> Exactly. Of There's a British version of Being Human, and Being Human is not one of the ones I feature on my page. That's Almost Human is very good, I like it. Uh, Carl Urban, he's a fantastic, fantastic actor. Um, of course, Where I Was 13 was just announced that it was being uh, announced their, the date for their final season, I believe it's in April. Uh, only five episodes as well. But anyway, so what we've transferred more into now is because uh, sci-fi is starting to make a, a, a more of an appearance on TV again, this is now going to be more ind independent, new original productions that people are trying to come up with and get out to the world. And that's what these packets all happen. Uh, there are, I believe, 12 or 13 different projects that we have flyers here for you guys uh, to look at. One of which... Um, is a, is for Star Trek Universe, uh, an animated fan series to continue it on at least for another season, which actually got shut down at one point uh, by MGM, but they found a way to get around it and they're bringing it back. Um, hello. Another one that is one of our more featured projects that we support would be uh, here. Another one that we support, if you look at your uh, little packets, it's one of like the post-it card size. It's Nobility. Now, Nobility has been described by its creator, e, uh, E.J. De La Pena, he, uh, as Firefly meets The Office. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, twist. Uh, and their tagline, their tagline is. This is not the crew you are looking for. Yeah, that's good. Uh, it's supposed to be kind of a, you know, it's a, it's a dramedy. And it's going to be like this crew that isn't really, you know, in the best shape. It's not the best, you know, teamwork either. And they're going to evolve over time. But it's, you know, it's going to be kind of in a way like, I guess, Eureka in the sense that it's supposed to be funny but dramatic at the same time. And, uh... So that one, they've finished their crowdfunding campaigns and are filming in, hopefully, March. Uh, EJ has invited me to come down to the set in LA and help, uh, help them out with filming, get some back, back uh, 
scene footage and everything for my page. That's going to be pretty awesome. Uh, it in, now, the reason I like this project so much is it involves Claudia Christian from Babylon 5. Slash hmm? Spoon. I said Spoon. I said yes, that's a good idea. Okay. And Cass Anvar, uh, he's made a voice, he's a, he's, he was in Source Code uh, as one of the secondary scientists, but he's also done the games, he's been in uh, uh, Assassin's, Creed, Assassin's Creed, Halo 4, uh, so he's working his way up there. Um, he's a pretty cool guy. We have a podcast that we that we were doing for a while, and right now it's been on hiatus for a while because we've been having some logistics issues with our primary web show host and all, but uh, and the fact that he's in Japan and I'm here. Time zone difference. Yeah, it's big difference. Yeah, we we're thinking about transferring to a new host, but um, basically. He came on the po he came on the podcast. It was you know, a lot of fun. He gave us some insight into the show. Uh, right now, we're in the, still in the process of editing the videos and the audio for all the podcasts. But we do have a few episodes online on our YouTube channel. Just look up Safe Sci-Fi on YouTube. Uh, but we'll be getting them out as soon as possible. We have a we're doing the best we can, but we've got a very limited uh, set of manpower. So we do the, so you know comes out as soon as we can. There's another, uh, we don't only support TV shows, we also support books. Uh, one of which is The Star Crystal. It's a, the first one's come out, he's working on the second book, and that's one of the, that's, I think it's the second postcard, it's a, that's a combination between uh, Save Sci-Fi and The Star Crystal. We do a lot of cross advertising for each other, and then there's one of the business cards for him too. Uh, the author, Danny Dane, he is in Australia, and he sent me a copy of his book, and I liked it. Uh, there was, there was, of course, room to improve, every author does, but it's a little bit of a twist. It's got these, you know, feline, humanoid uh, creatures who are called the strays, and then they are, and these three of them are piloting their ship. And they're having to run from law enforcement and such. <laughs> um, but it's a relatively short book, good for uh, about yeah, young adults. I like the book. There's no, not much illustration yet, but he said the second book well. I have a question. Mm -hmm. When you say that you also support books, I'm just conceptually, you have a Facebook page. So besides posting a link on your Facebook page to the project, how exactly do you support these other uh, efforts and how do you choose to support one effort over another and then do they support, how do they support you in return? Well, a lot of the times, uh, you know, I have my contact information on my page, just info, and we've also got a website. Um, if somebody with a you know, a realistic proposal, one that isn't like off the wall ridiculous idea, we will support it. Um, if they you know they can either message us on the page. Occasionally, I'll send out I'll put out a post saying, you know, especially the conventions coming up, asking who would like to be on our flyer, and the results of that post are in your programs. And that's the our pullout flyer that has all the different projects. Uh, we do phase some in, phase some out, and they're picked by the ones that we do support. While we do support most of them, they are picked by a group vote from our admins. We have eight admins right now, two, two, uh, two of which are in Australia, one is in Japan, and then the others are in the United States, across the country. And uh, they will go and support us back by, for instance, uh, uh, Gwydion. Again, I think it's how it's pronounced. Then Immortal You and uh, what was it? and the Stargate uh, animated series are all have all agreed to put us give us a special thank you in their credits for the show. Um, others with larger Facebook pages will give up, will post about us in return, and we also put in con people in contact with each other. For instance, right now uh, the Stargate animated fan series does need animators uh, really badly. So if any of you guys are animators or would like, or no animators who might be interested, they could use the help. Um, all 
I have been able, yeah, the people from all these different projects that we support are all now, have all now gotten to know each other. They all help each other out over time. And uh, basically, other than that, we put the word out and we give as much exposure to these projects as possible. Uh, basically, and how many likes do you have on your page? Right now, uh, I don't know exactly, but we have 5,100 and I think 30 cool. something. And we're growing. Uh, we've had this page has been active for a little over two years. Or actually, no, about two and a half years now. And it's, it's you know, hasn't grown at quite the pace that I had hoped. But nothing like the 75, 85,000. Would you consider uh, having a separate? Website separate from face we do book okay Our, the problem with the website the reason that's not pulling much traffic is because again we have very limited manpower uh, I'm in high school still I'm a, I am a senior in high school I'm about to graduate I don't have the time to write articles every few days to post to the website <laughs> uh, and we've gotten occasionally a guest uh, to a guest author to write something. We also have, we have movie reviews. We have uh, just, we're, we're hoping to have articles on the site about science in sci-fi, about the future of science fiction. You know all these different topics. Problem is we don't have enough writers, enough committed ones, and that's something we are constantly looking for. Thankfully, right now uh, we do have one who's just joined us. Uh, her name is Despina, and she is going to be posting a lot of original fan fiction. Uh, early reception of it so far has been pretty good. How do you get people to? Uh, how do you communicate with your with the people who like your page? I mean, I have pages, and and when I post something on it, unless somebody clicks it, they want to particularly follow it or get it into their feed, which they hardly ever do. What you post there is only seen by the people who will revisit the page, I assume, and look down at what is posted. So how do you reach out to those 5,000 people to get out the word on anything? Well, unfortunately, none of our posts get to all 5,000. Um, not by any means a lot of the time. The most we've had is, yeah, I think, 3,000. Uh, recently, our exposure spikes overall. The page's exposure spiked to like 75,000 people that have the... I believe it's. I believe the way Facebook works in that sense is that they could see the post, like if somebody, if their friend liked it and it just showed up as, oh, your friend liked this or whatever. Well, most of the time, people are gonna ignore that, but it had the opportunity. Uh, we try to make our post as involving, uh, make give our audience as much involvement as possible. Right now, my Australian admin, David Bax, he is doing this series of. Uh, we're, build, we're building our own safe sci-fi starship crew, and people can vote for each position of any sci-fi character they want. And we are getting over 100, 200 responses to every vote. And for each position, and then there's the finals, and then the person gets locked in. I think we're like halfway through the crew right now, and then we're going to be doing a safe sci-fi ship. He's been very, very good at getting people involved. and. People just do thankfully keep coming back, and I, you know, I make do my utmost to keep involved in my audience personally. I know a lot of those pages out there, once they get over a hundred or two hundred, find a hard time responding to everybody. I will, I personally go through our posts, whether I posted the post or whether or not one of my other admins did, or our messages, and I respond to every single one that. They, that is a question, and thankfully people seem to like it. Uh, yeah, it's it's all a matter of keeping your audience and keeping them involved and engaged. That's what we do our best to do. How do you hope to make money from the page? Now that's a little bit more. Uh, that's a little bit more recent stuff. Right now, uh, again, I don't have. Okay, in. In your in your uh, programs, we do have I think the soul flyer in it. We just recently started doing sponsors. We are going to get sponsors right now. Our sponsor is Fantastic Books Publishing, and 
they do a lot, they're doing a lot, they like to do some sci-fi stuff as well with their books. And so they just donated a hundred dollars to us. And, which paid for, uh, yeah, about two thirds of the cost for from the flyers. And, um, donations are the other thing, and unfortunately we don't get that many donations, but we, we've gotten about $70 total in donations other than the sponsorship. And uh, basically, our website's going to have, eventually, once we get people posting onto the website, uh, ad revenue and such. We also do have Save Sci-Fi hats, Save Sci-Fi shirts, pens, uh, maybe we even have some posters. But, um, but the goal of this page isn't to make money. The goal of this page is to provide the fans of science fiction with good quality original science fiction. Money would be a bonus, but you know. We do need money though, to some extent, to uh, produce stuff. Uh, up until recently, Save Sci-Fi has been uh, promoting other people's projects. On the other side of the flyer in your uh, program is a casting call for our first original production. It's going to be an audiographic novel called Project YXM. Basically, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the one on Android's market called Anarchy, I believe it's called. It's basically a, uh, like that, it's like a virtual comic book, so you know, you'll click and the pictures will come up, the bubbles will come up, with speech in it, and then you'll hear, and then the difference is that you'll, you will hear the character speak their lines. And that's what the project is eventually going to be. Uh, right now we're waiting on auditions for believe, two of the main characters. And once we get those, we'll be able to fin finish up the casting process and move on to getting the, all the lines recorded. And we're then going to be getting um, some artists, our Japanese admins, uh, one of which being the writer of the series and another one being my webmaster, Grin. Is, at least that's what he goes by, uh, Stephen Harsha. And he ha knows a bunch of Japanese uh, anime manga uh, artists who are interested in being in the project. But the first thing's first, we want to get the audio done. So once you get the audio done, you, know, you can take time you need to get the visuals. Um, are you using the word admin or admin? Admin, administrators oh. for the page, sorry. Uh, yeah. Administrative assistant. <laughs> my profession. Yeah, most of my admins, honestly, are basically my partners. I don't rely on, and I don't tell them you know, to do stuff. They all do, they all do it all, their own ideas, and they're always really great ideas. Um, another thing we do at Save Sci-Fi is uh, like on the flyer is this, the Save Sci-Fi Versus, and, or the Sci-Fi Versus. Basically, every, either every day or every two days, uh, we'll put up a picture with two different, uh, you know, if, if it's fleets of starships, like recently we had a Bowser Galactica fleet versus, uh, I believe, a Star Trek fleet. And everybody basically, Posted their opinion, and surprising. And I wasn't quite sure about it at first because, you know, if you're doing a vote where you're going to get a result at the end, a definite result, like somebody gets to win, uh, then I can definitely expect people to vote for that. But thankfully, even though nobody really wins this, people are voicing their opinion. We get tons of people voting on this stuff. Um, one of them was the Death Star versus the entire Atlantean fleet from uh, Stargate Atlantis. <laughs> and, yeah, a lot of people like it. Um, like I said, I guess to get back to the projects we do, that's right, I get it. Uh, we, you know, we support a lot of stuff. Um, books, web shows, uh, so, you know, our, the one project that's already out done and all that we do like to support is the movie Strange Frame. If 
you look at the back of the packet I gave you, there's a flyer, a flyer for it. Uh, the tagline is Two Lesbians, One Saxophone. It's an interesting movie. I have heard about it. I have not personally watched it, but yeah, while it may not be for everybody, it has a lot of stars. If you look at the list of voice actors in this thing, uh, they got Tim Curry, Claudia Black, Ron Glass, Claudia Christian, Michael Dorn, George Takei, Alan Tudyk, uh, Tara Strong. They've got a ton of good stars in this. And this is by G.B. Hajim. He lives in Hawaii, and he's going to be hosting the first Hawaii Con in September. So if you guys want to go to Hawaii, I recommend you go. It's going to have some good guests. Um, oh yes, there's one other particular project that I did want to talk to you guys about, and I'd like to talk to you about it. Uh, the Museum of Science Fiction. How awesome would that be? <laughs> Having a National Museum of Science Fiction that we could all go to? Well, it's happening. There is a group out there, uh, and they're very organized. They are finding a location right now for their preview museum. It's going to be a one-story museum with a few exhibits. They've already got the Enterprise E model. The, the official is the one they used in, you know, that to design it. And uh, what else was it? They had a replica TARDIS. I think it was on, it was on Indiegogo, right? Or was it, it was. It was on Indiegogo. I, th I think the campaign might still be going. I don't. I can't. I can't remember what the yeah, end I can't remember either. I've been hoping. I've been wanting to do it. You know, in high school, I don't have that much money. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I donated. So. Oh, fantastic! So are you gonna be a or I call it, I was it a founding colonist or whatever they call it? I guess so. Whatever, whatever it was. <laughs> yes. Well. Um, well, how did you find out about it? I I think I saw somebody uh, somebody put somebody who was a friend. Had, met, had put something up on Facebook on, on their, in their feed, and then I so I saw about it from there, and then I went to the, went went to the site, and it looked interesting. So cool. I was curious because recently in uh, DC, you guys know the Capitol the building reflecting pool. Well, the Museum of Science Fiction filmed a uh, promotional video there, and they had about 20 of the 501st Legion there. All dressed up in their outfits, uh, Darth Vader, Stormtroopers, Imperial Guards, TIE Fighters, and they were all there milling about, <laughs> interacting with the, with passerby. <laughs> uh, so people were walking by and just like, wait, what? Why are the Stormtroopers in the Capitol? <laughs> and uh, they invited me there to get some uh, pretty exclusive footage of them filming their public service announcement, which is pretty funny. It's, I got the storm, got a Stormtrooper watching. Uh, uh, reading, um, what was it? I can't remember the name of the magazine, but yeah. it look, looks like he's looking on a map trying to find the museum. And then there's the, you know, two, like, 12 of them marching in a line going for it. The full video is up on their, uh, I believe on their Indiegogo page. But it's definitely something that I want to see. They are hoping to have the full museum built by 2017. And not only are they going to be having exhibits of science fiction, they're going to be promoting it, promoting science for youth. They're going to have this interactive um, and techni technologically, yeah, or tech bleh, very high tech stuff. Um, like these, they're going to have this interactive virtual system that's going to let the kids interact with a virtual representation, I believe, of probes, like scientific, like space probes. It. They, the project looks so, so promising, and it would be really nice to see this, you know, hard science coming back into science fiction for me. I would love to see that. But I definitely encourage you guys to go check out their Indiegogo page, at least, and then donate if you are willing. Um, what kind of sci-fi do you guys like? What are your kind, favorite kinds of, TV, like, name favorite TV shows? And Babylon I want Five. Babylon Five. Perfect. Firefly. Firefly. Oh, it's almost too. human. Red Dwarf. No. Red Dwarf. I just started watching that. Red Dwarf. That is, a, that is an interesting show. Um, Have you seen the American one that doesn't exist? No. Pilot? <laughs> Don't. Oh, well, actually, do. Wait, the one that doesn't eat what? It, it never got made, but there was an American pilot for uh, the American <laughs> version of the show. 
That's interesting. As terrible as you can imagine. All right. Anyway, but back to Babylon 5. Now that is also, I'd have to say that's my favorite science fiction show of all time. Uh, last year in True Leaf, uh, I don't know if you guys know, uh, Julie Caitlin Brown, she was there. Uh, she was in the Toph, uh, Shakar's aide. And I got a chance to talk to her, and she agreed to come on our podcast for an interview. So we do have one of for those. I can try to remember if that one's finished editing or not, but if it's not, it will be soon. And she talked a lot about, she talked a bit about Babylon 5. Uh, remember she, at the convention, she told a story about her and uh, Shakar's actor, uh, what, her first meeting with him. And uh, she's a really nice woman. And pleasure to talk to her. Very good musician. Uh, another thing is that uh, there's... Hmm? Andreas Kuzulis? Yes. Heard, yes. I, what did she say? Because I heard that he like stayed in character a lot. He yes. did. He did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I not remember her saying anything. <laughs> apparently, uh, she, he kind of freaked her out for a little while. Um, but he apparently is a very funny man. And I'm sure he was. Uh, another person that we're having on our podcast soon is a guy who was an animator for Babylon 5 in the fourth and fifth seasons. Uh, so... Yeah, if you're interested, definitely stay tuned for that. We've got actually a long. Huh? I don't know the name. I don't remember. I don't know his name uh, off the top of my head because I literally two or three days ago got in contact with him. So. Are you familiar with the Babylon Project? It's a it's a was a website. Now also is a has a heavy Facebook presence, but that's almost exclusively geared towards the production of Babylon Five, and they have a lot of contacts into. The animators, I think. You're talking about the behind the scenes thing? Yeah, the behind the scenes. That's where I contacted him. Okay, yeah. When I mean, he said last four or five seasons, though. Yeah, but he just because... posted, he just put a post that recently saying he was taking over the page. Yeah, exactly. Yep. I got in contact with yeah, him a few days that, ago. That, that, that site is yeah, interesting. It is. Yeah, I don't know if you can get Mojo, who was one of the uh, animators from the first two seasons. Uh, he used he used to regularly come come here to to Shirley or uh, a few times so, and and he he, he went on uh, and worked on Battlestar Galactic and so forth. He, so you, you might, might want to see, see if you can contact him. He, he, he's a he's a very very uh, very uh, you know, personal uh, person. All right, great, thanks. Um, but yeah, speaking of the guests. That are coming up for our podcast. Once we get it back up, back up and going again, uh, like I said, logistical issues, and we're thinking about moving, switching to a new podcast host who's in the Midwest. But um, he's been very busy lately with uh, with family issues and such. Uh, but as soon as we get back up and going, we've got uh, Kasha. She is a actress, um, a, a smaller actress right now, but she's. Uh, uh, actress and I believe the producer of a new project. Um, which one was it? I don't think she gave. Oh yeah, she never gave me a logo, but um, it was Inner Dimension, I believe. And that's another project you should look at. I think they they might still be doing the crowdfunding campaign. Problem with crowdfunding campaigns, I've noticed with a lot of these projects, is that they start the funding campaign before anybody knows about it. And so that's really where we've come in, is we've been trying to boost people's awareness, especially for these projects that have already started. Um, like Nobility never ended up getting their full, their goal done or anything. Um, we've also got a, uh, if you guys know, the uh, uh, St. Mary's College of uh, Southern Maryland, or of Maryland. It's a private, it's a private college, and the professor, and their head of the physics department, Professor Adler, he is writing a book called uh, Wizards, Aliens, and Starships, I believe, and it is going, it is basically uh, examining the science of Harry Potter, Star Trek, and other science fiction shows. He sent me a copy of his book and I started reading it. It's really well thought out and really well done. I definitely recommend you guys look that book up. We're going to be promoting his stuff more in the future and he's going to be joining us on the podcast. But he does have a sense of humor in his book so it's not just straight up dry calculations. 
and it's also no more complicated than I believe high school algebra. So, yeah. What's your vision for safe sci-fi? Obviously, I didn't know that sci-fi needed saving, but now that I know that it needs saving, the question is, it seems like sci-fi is a very broad category. So, uh, do you have a, a a vision for where you see this project going? Uh, well, that's funny, actually. Um, uh, Kate Walker, when she saw my shirt when I first met her, asked me, "Sci-fi needs saving?" <laughs> kind of uh, a little dampener on that, but uh. Basically, my vision for safe sci-fi, uh, I want the page to, and the organization of effort to eventually get to the point where we have the funding to fund projects, to produce our own projects, and to give people um, either, if not completely free access to a lot of some good new science fiction, then very, very cheap. I don't want to end up with, you know, one of these organizations that, you know, go out of their way to charge normal prices. I don't want to, you know, just to get the stuff out there. If we can do it, I want to make it as uh, accessible as possible for everybody who wants to see it. Because, you know, that's what I want. I want to see science fiction. And... That's basically the goal of the page. Do you know of these websites where you can set up a project and there's like a, a goal or a, time, yep. a goal amount and a timeline? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Kickstarter and Indiegogo are the two biggest ones that I know of. Yeah. Um, so couldn't you do like cross-linking, have links to those? projects on your site? We, we do. We often do. We po uh, this, well, now the website is a bit harder to do with that because, again, like I said, we're a very limited manpower. No, uh, I didn't say you actually do that as a service, but I'm saying do a link to the existing campus. Yes, we do. we do. We do post about them. The okay. uh, problem is, again, they're very, like I said, they do, these projects will do their Kickstarters and their Indiegogo projects before they're ready to. They don't have Why exposure. Why do they do that? <laughs> I don't know. To get the family and friends, I assume, to put the money in. Yeah, I mean, some projects can do, can do it, and then people will find out about it. It spreads like wildfire. A lot of these things, especially niche niche shows, you know, science fiction, don't spread that fast. And when Nobility did it, uh, they didn't get much funding on Kickstarter. The difference between Kickstarter and Indiegogo is that Kickstarter, if you don't reach your goal, you don't get the money. Indiegogo, you get to keep the money. And they did end up making some of the money back on Indiegogo. But at that point, their Facebook page had... Actually, I don't think they had a Facebook page at the point, but they did Kickstarter. Um, I started to volunteer more with Nobility when they contacted me. And so I'm an admin of their Facebook page as well. I don't do that much, but when I see opportunities to help them with their media, they've got over 1,000 now. But it's been, they've had their Facebook page for, I don't know, three or four months. And they, like I said, they, yeah, they did their, they didn't, just didn't have the exposure, and that's why they didn't finish it. Uh, so it sounds like to me, and you correct me if I'm wrong, that you, it seems like you're really interested in emphasizing the science of science fiction. Yes. And that's the shows, the stories that you're looking for. Is that act more accurate? Yes, accurate? but we, we won't, we will not throw shows out to dry if they don't have hard totally hard, hard science, science yeah, fiction. Okay. As long as it's not, you know, this happened because it happened. Well, that's you the know? kind of science fiction I grew up with as a kid, you know, I mean, reading Asimov and all that, and, you know, so, you know, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we like to have scientific, some scientific backing behind our stuff. We don't want, I mean, okay, Star Wars, incredibly fantasy, but it still has some science. And a lot of the shows, like I said, when I was 13, a lot of their stuff isn't very science -y. Uh, You know, they'll have like these magic artifacts that get imbued with emotion, real power and such. I love the show, but it's not quite science. Uh, some people will argue with that, but 
They have the laser guns. <laughs> they do. They do. They have the uh, they have their little test laser. Well, just like other genres, you know, you you know, you have comedy, but you have different kinds of comedy. You have slapstick comedy. You have black comedy. You know, so on and so forth. So I mean, the same thing with science fiction. You know. That, that that's very true. And Black that sci-fi. that question that comes in that leads into the question, what is sci-fi? And that is such a hard question to answer, because a lot of people. It's a matter of the storyteller. Exactly. A lot of people say fiction. Uh, you know, it's science fiction. Fiction can be fantasy. It doesn't have to be just science. Some people say, well, then that's what fantasy is. That's not science fiction. Science fiction has science in it. And then how much science makes it science fiction? It's a very complicated question. Everybody has a different answer to it. That's the question. That's the problem that I've found uh, interferes with these kind of efforts. Like people go and say, you know, like recently there was a just this random post on our page uh, by somebody uh, with some rather colorful language, um, basically implying that the page was a bunch of crap because it didn't, wasn't necessary. And they named like a bunch of these random shows. Most of which were fantasy. And people will say, you know, like on the sci-fi channel right now, para, uh, where their ghost, the paranormal basically ruled the channel. Um, that and wrestling. That and wrestling, yes. And I have had a few people try to argue with me that the wrestling shows in sci-fi are science fiction. What? <laughs> yes. I've had people argue. They're acting. <laughs> and some of them say that, you know, it's, what, isn't, I, I don't watch it. Uh, isn't it like, uh, unless, unless what, isn't it like fake wrestling? wrestling? Yes. Yeah, it's fake wrestling. wrestling. And they're supposed, they say like, oh, there's the physics in it, you know, they have to do it right to make it. Just, oh. Oh, then there, are, there are these ridiculous people out there who will say that, you know, the most far off things still apply. And you can't be like ultra specific to the point where you're saying, oh, this one little piece makes it all science fiction. It doesn't work. Wrestling is not science fiction, no matter what you tell no. me about it. <laughs> but Wrestling is even fantasy. <laughs> even if it was Cardargo and Tear Anasazi wrestling, <laughs> it would not be sci fi. <laughs> but if in the new show, he looks science fiction. That's. Helix and The Walking Dead, I think, are in the kind of the same strain. Um, I've had personally, I don't watch Walking Dead, I do watch Helix, uh, but I've had like personal inner conflicts with myself about these two shows, whether or not they're science fiction. There have been <coughs> the zombies are so overdone by now, I can't believe they're out of sight. Yeah, but, but I mean, vampires Helix isn't is starting to quite yet. Isn't I mean, isn't it yet? You're right because it's still. Dealing with disease and science. Right. And though, though they did in last Friday's episode, they did have the cliched <laughs> zombie. <laughs> they, they had a cliched zombie scene. I missed it. No, no, no not not no, this far. Missed, not, not yesterday, but the one I missed before. the one before. It. Oh. Well, they had they had a cliched <laughs> zombie scene. <laughs> <laughs> but still, it's it, it's been pretty. It, all right, but but presumably you can get it off their website. No, I, yeah, on, I have it on on demand. But I mean, I like the show. Uh, it seems to be a hit or miss with a lot of people. But but it, it, it's had plenty of surprises, which is cool. But it's exactly. only, I th believe it's a limited series. So. I want to know what's up with his eyes. Yeah. Talking about viruses, what about Helix? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh the Walking Dead. Oh, The Walking Dead also. Now, the thing with The Walking Dead is that it's supposedly... You guys have watched Walking Dead? Yeah. 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 No, okay, some of you have. Yeah. Now, that show, isn't it based off of some kind of virus or something that yeah. starts it. Yeah. But then afterwards, does it deal with any of the science? It Would makes you... you, yeah. It's a virus where if you, everyone has it and they die. If they die, they become zombies. And if they live, they just become really stupid and lose all forethought. <laughs> I think that's, <laughs> that's the only way it can make sense of that show. I would argue that maybe it's a matter of perspective. If all we're talking about is the drama between people and the occasional zombie coming that you kill, it may not be science fiction. If they broaden the scope where are the humans going? Are they rebuilding on an island somewhere? Uh, how are they addressing it in terms of science and trying to solve the problem? It might then become more science fiction. I agree. That would make it. Well, more. most science fiction shows are mostly drama, anyways. Yes, but they, they still like the Walking Dead. 
But if the Walking Dead, for the Walking Dead, it's mostly they're trying to survive the zombie apocalypse. Right, but that, the first season was, was was more solid science fiction type stuff, and then we went to the CDC and all that stuff. And then since then, but of course, it's it's really localized in these characters, so it's hard. You, you don't get to see the big picture. I want to see the big picture. I'd like to know that people went to Madagascar, killed everybody on that island, so that the virus is not there, and they could build a life for the next five centuries. I'd like to know what's happening okay. in the world. You know, is there some place to strive to get to? How are we addressing it with science? That's not happening. Unfortunately. That's just me. I think a sci-fi show is something that um, that um, it's it's found the foundation of its premise is based on something that's not scientifically true but is scientifically plausible, mm -hmm. and that and so something that's a fictional virus that is the whole premise of the show. If that is the basis of the show, it qualifies. As much as you hate it, I mean, it's, just, it's still... Again, to that's where one is it, It's hard to define sci-fi without including things like that. But, that's I mean, true. You, can, you can certainly define bad sci-fi. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and soap opera sci-fi. It's, it's hard to really exclude it, because it's not just technology. It's any sort of science, uh, scientific premise that really should be... I mean, there's sci-fi that's based in the past. So, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's I'd like to I'd like to bring up Revolution for a second. Who watches Revolution? Yeah. Okay. They're, 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 I like they're doing some interesting things, and they are doing. I mean, you know, bringing in in some surprises there, and you know, they they, they completely at the end of the first season, you know, just basically restarted with a new premise on the on the on the second season. I don't like the way the second season started because. I don't know if you guys have watched Gene Roddenberry's Andromeda, but mm -hmm. the, yes. fifth, the fifth season <laughs> completely changed. And they were all stuck in this little place, this one place, and it completely yeah, changed the attitude of the series. I didn't like that. And it also kind of got a little weirder and such. It wasn't as much the typical Andromeda. And that's kind of what Revolution yeah, they, did. They lost well, their way. In the I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, th but this one, it seemed that they, you know, it made it made more sense in that you know we're still fo following you know because in the first season there was no revolution per se. We're wondering where the hell is the revolution? Well, they had the re they did have the rebels with the American yeah, with the yeah American sort of flag. but there wasn't and they were tr they were fighting against them. I I can definitely see that. But, but here there is more of a it, it looks like there's there's a bit more but I mean. I would not be surprised if this is a lot. The only season, what second you, season. What do you think about the? What do you think about? Or you guys have watched Revolution. What do you think about the premise, or how they explain it, the power? Because I was really hoping that this would be one of those series that did give a plausible explanation, a dampening feel. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, I yeah, yeah. did follow it. A damp well, a dampening field would have explained to some degree what might have happened if they had created a planet-wide dampening field. But nanites, fight, flying nanites that self-replicate to, you know, trillions and trillions and trillions of them that suck in all the energy and such isn't realistic. Or that ones that can heal people. Heal people, develop sentience. It, it doesn't... It's not sci-fi to me. That's more fantasy. Well, there are existing nanites. But they don't fly, multiply, and then they go well, all the energy the in the world. Fan, that's the that's how you catch them. They'll yeah. fly and convert into gray goo. But it's not realistic. But there are nanites, nanites that actually do fly, or if you're not aware of that. I there don't are flying miniature fly. robots. Yes. I know there are flying miniature robots, but I, didn't, yeah. I don't think of nanites as flying. Maybe there are. But... I think you ought to do some research on it. Still sucking in all the power in the world. Well, by volume, well, they, the number they, they, of them. The government made a mistake. <laughs> and again, Michael, how can it's we not, help so you real. build safe sci-fi? As we're moving to the final minutes of the panel. Oh, wow. <laughs> how can we be of service to you? I like what you're doing. It's wonderful. And certainly, I'd like to be supportive in any way um, we can. I'll get the word out to people about it. Um, Definitely support the projects that we're trying to support. Give them an opportunity to put themselves out there to grow. Uh, 
keep promoting good science fiction and uh, like our page. <laughs> um, if you guys want to, if you guys are personally interested in being involved, we have any number of things you can do. Uh, we could use we can use uh, writers for our website. We can use artists. We can use audio uh, drop people interested in voice acting. Um, animators. Animators. Yes. Uh, any number of things. And if we don't have a use for you, I know somebody who does. Yeah, <laughs> I've got I've got a Facebook group of fourteen other uh, of me, my admins, and fourteen or fifteen other people who are doing their own little project, their own individual projects that want people's help. Uh, one of which being, like I said, the Stargate uh, the Stargate Universe animated. He reminded me about a half an hour ago. We need animators. <laughs> um, yeah. If you're interested in helping, uh, send a message to our Facebook page. Or look at our info and you'll find my email and send me an email and we will give you something to do. <laughs> I need email because I boycott Facebook for some important reasons. Okay. Well, then I can give you my email after we're done. So yeah. how, how is that start Stargate thing working with MGM anyway? They have supposedly found a way around the cease and desist letter sent to them. Uh, Part of it involved people, because some people work, who were previously involved worked on the actual show, mm -hmm. and now they're off the team. I believe that was one of the major things that was the issue, and they supposedly found a way around it. Uh, unfortunately, he was not able to come. He came to our panel at Shore Leave last year. Uh, uh, Eugene Alex, he did come and he talked a bit about it, which we actually have our edited video from Shore Leave podcast. Uh, from our short leave uh, panel on our YouTube channel that you can go check out. Um, oh, I guess the other thing I should probably mention before we finish is uh, this uh, Star Trek Cardinal. This is the other project I've been, actually I've been involved in this, this project the longest. Uh, back in seventh grade, I had to write a, uh, a paper from one of my classes about something we were passionate about, some kind of, something new coming out or whatever. And I found this uh, possible new Star Trek show, Star Trek Cardinal, uh, by Salvatore Lagonia. He's approached CBS about it, and uh, though only as a side topic, because he does, he's a producer, he does, or director, I think he's a director, he's uh, done, he's doing multiple other projects, multiple other things, like some movies or ever, um, not hugely known ones, but uh, he has done some. Uh, if you look him up on IMDb, you'll find him. Uh, Star Trek Cardinal's website also is not, uh, he just hasn't had that much time to devote to it. He was in the process of redoing it, so it's like half redone, half not. But I also I do run the Facebook page for Star Trek Cardinal, and I've run that longer than I have Save Sci-Fi. And he has an artist who's, uh, a 3D modeling artist who has done some early renders, one of, this is like one of which, it's just a general concept design of the ship of the Lucas ship, it's supposed to be a um, combination of Federation, Romulan, Klingon, uh, I think some Marine and Cardassian technologies. And it's got a crew, a mixed crew of all of them too. And the story's going to be uh, a lot of the crew learning to work together, addressing their differences, which of course has always been a huge staple of Star Trek, uh, learning to accept one another. Uh, uh, social issues and such, and it's going to be more like, though a little more modern, kind of like what Enterprise wanted to do, a bit more, uh, you know, action, though Enterprise, yeah, some people say it didn't work as well, um, but point is this one's going to be like, uh, kind of like on the border of Federation space, which on the border, they're going to encounter a lot more conflicts, uh, border skirmishes and such, and I don't know much of the uh, overall storyline. All I know is really what I've heard from the pilot, and I'm not allowed to tell you guys. He what's the plan? A TV yeah. show? A movie? Uh, he wants to have it as a TV show. And I think it's definitely time for Star Trek to come back to the small screen. Um, oh, the other project you guys should check out if you're interested in Star Trek is Star Trek Renegades, if you haven't heard about it. Uh, Walter Koenig, uh, Tim Russ, they've got a bunch of stars doing it, and it's, it looks really cool. Um, so definitely look that up. That's not one of the ones we support, really, because they have more than enough support. This is a, it's 
much more professionally done. Not obviously they're not selling it. I don't think because then I think it has to be considered a right. official. But it it looks really really good. Um, there's also Star Trek continues and Star Trek continues. Star Trek Farragut. Farragut. Yeah. I thought Star Star Trek continues was a renamed. Too, that they, they took the storyline, I believe, from the original. They were uh, after Star Trek was canceled. There was Phase Two was going to be the next series. Yeah, but then they decided to do a movie instead when they saw the success of Star right. Wars. Yeah. And so Phase Two was then. No mat all over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that was a Star Trek right? Yeah. Um, any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Wait, one thing though, if I could pass this up, you guys. Just uh, for Paige, if you could all, if I could, if I could record you guys saying our little tagline, save sci-fi, save the future. Could you guys do that? Okay. Save sci-fi and save the future. Save sci-fi. Save, 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 save the, the future. future. Say that out loud. And we we have we of our footage from uh, the promotional video of uh, of from the Museum of Science Fiction. We have Darth Vader saying that, which sounds fantastic. Anyway, so which Darth Vader, David Prowse or James Earl Jones, or just some guy the, okay, Darth Vader. just some guy named Darth Vader. <laughs> All right, one, two, three. Save sci-fi, save the future!